Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love and today I want to share with you a new painting tutorial. We'll be doing some intuitive painting samplers that I think you're really going to love. These are fun for releasing you from expectations and discovering new techniques. I hope you enjoy today's painting practice and I can't wait to see what you're creating. Today I want to do something with my Peerless watercolors and I don't know if you've ever heard of the Peerless watercolors but they are watercolor on sheets of paper basically and I was kind of hesitant about these but I got this set right here in my sketch box one month um, which is why I like getting those art boxes because I get stuff that I might not normally have bought or even considered trying and after I tried those I'm like oh this is super cool and so then I got this is the um, peerless complete edition after that I got the peerless bonus pack and the peerless expressive face tones and you would think that these would use up pretty quick but I have found that these go a long way so it's kind of amazing how they've managed to put so much color on little pieces of paper the only drawback is once you get this piece of paper wet you need to put it somewhere until it dries because then you can't stack all the wet pieces of paper <laughs> ah, funny things that we learn so I'm gonna start off um, with some watercolor just make some fun little abstracts I'll be using uh, to start with maybe my Raphael Aqua Zero brush because it's the one I really love the quill brush and I'm going to be playing on uh, some sketch box paper this is the Portofino hot press 100% cotton 140 pound paper so play, play on any paper that you have I just have all these little pads of paper that I get in these little boxes and I thought I need to start using all these pads of paper and experiment on them so today I'm experimenting on the hot press paper because it's not one I pull out as often and I might pull out some different brushes maybe we'll do some mark making I just want to let's just go ahead and get something on the paper now see even drawing on the paper like this I can feel a complete and total difference in the hot press than the cold press so that's kind of interesting because it's very very smooth and then let's step outside our comfort zone this bonus pack comes with an absolute ton of colors and you can kind of gauge the color from the back piece of paper and I'm just going to just completely go outside my comfort zone and just see what we get. Um, so I've pulled out Peacock Blue, Scarlet Lake, Ecru, and Mountain Green. These may look terrible together. I don't know. But that's what I like about intuitive painting. Just go ahead. And the other thing about these watercolors as it gets on your fingers as you touch these papers so I do like my microfiber cloth that I have here at my table because I can kind of wipe most of the stuff off my fingers and then I'm not transferring it to my paper um, but yeah so I just start painting with this technique just what feels good I'm not looking for a specific outcome I do have a test piece of paper over here that I don't know I've used for something else that I could look at these colors with real quick just to even see am I crazy oh now see now Scarlet Lake not what I expected I wanted a red so sometimes it is kind of good okay I don't like that well, I'm glad I tested these I don't like that ecru either all right and here's that green oh that green is really pretty all right so I'm feeling like mountain green let's see what rose red looks like <gasps> oh see now I'm feeling good that's what I was kind of going for so before you actually put paper to oh no 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 all right so I'm trying to go I want I don't know and my oh see I'm kind of feeling that one <laughs> once you uh, what you might do too is do a little oh I don't like that do for this I do like the color just not for this do like your own little color swatches and then you wouldn't have to do this but oh, I'm really feeling that right there and I like that orange Ooh, that's pretty that looks like opera pink that is um, opera pink from um, maybe Daniel Smith that's Jackie Minot red okay don't feel like I'm gonna use that today but it's very interesting and you can kind of see oh here's blood red 
Oh, that looks like blood, don't it? <laughs> Ooh, olive. Okay, what about olive? Oh, see, now the olive green is really pretty too. All right, but I'm really feeling definitely that blue and that I've got papers everywhere. Now, you see, you have to sit these to the side, hopefully out of your way before you can even stack them again because those little bits of paper need to dry. All right, so let's go ahead. Oh, let's just see what we get. That's gonna be, that's gonna be crazy. All right, I'm gonna start with this blue, which I'm a little bit obsessed with. What color was that? That was mountain green. <gasps> Look how pretty that color is. Oh my goodness, that's exactly what I wanted. Now, oh, now, <laughs> now that I did that, I'm kind of thinking. Oh, let's just go ahead kind of thinking on this one over here what if we took that bamboo brush that number four Windsor Newton bamboo brush and see if we can do those yummy oh um oh look at that atmospheric -y landscapes that I truly love with the um with the graphite watercolor and the Japanese watercolor look up look okay I'm feeling like <laughs> All right, we got one abstract and two landscapes. That's what we're going to go for today. Really, more than anything, today was about testing out and experimenting with color. What, what can we get? What does it look like? Final abstract stuff. And if you don't like it, we can cut it up. I love cutting stuff up. Okay, so let's go for... Got some water to the side. Oh, let's do this. Let's see what we get. And I can see too, like this hot press paper really holds that watercolor differently. It's picking it up different, spreads different. Very interesting. Uh, you know, I'm all about some art supplies. If you hang out with me for any length of time, <laughs> somebody told me yesterday. Um, that their wallet was trembling and I thought ha mine too <laughs> I was like that's a perfect way to say that oh look at that super fun oh okay this is gonna be just way outside what I normally do but that is the fun of experimenting this is how I come up with new classes okay I'm not sure I liked that at all <laughs> This is how I discover stuff. I'm telling you, I started the 100 day project, which I may or may not be in the middle now, depending on when you watch this. And now it is prettier as I mix these in with each other and smear it a little bit. Anyway, every, every time I get started back to my, I'm not going 100 days straight because I'm kind of being a little easier on myself. But every time I get back to it, I come up with like 15 new ideas for like classes or YouTube videos or something else I want to test out. And then I'm like, stop it on the project, rolling with that idea, and then going back to the project. Oh, see, now it's real pretty if you get it mixed in with that. That's what I'm thinking. So it might take me 365 days just to do the 365 day project but that's how I come up with all the ideas and things that I do for classes at YouTube and stuff it's all about the experimenting and if I've got a new supply to experiment more power to me because <laughs> I get really excited okay so I'm gonna let these dry and then come back and do some stuff on top of this I could come back right now and see I can put some salt on here Ooh, yeah let's do the salt because they're still kind of wet we can get some texture going in here I'm really feeling it here on this landscape I'm calling it a landscape it's more like a little abstract landscape there and we could come back in with some water blooms if we wanted to test out to see how this stuff blooms out but a little bit of salt I'm just using some big kind of sea salt there I think that's my nice salt that I never actually used for cooking <laughs> because <laughs> I don't actually cook <laughs> I would just rather somebody cook for me <laughs> that was my favorite moment let's just put some blooms in here with some water dabs my favorite thing to ask when I was a kid as soon as I got home what's for dinner and I told my mom one time I'm like oh my goodness 
I miss being able to ask somebody else, what's for dinner? <laughs> it's funny the things that you remember years later. Ooh, I'm feeling the texture going here. Oh, yeah. Oh. Now with the salt on here, we're going to have to let these pieces completely dry and kind of do their thing. Don't be tempted to hit it with the heat gun. The problem with the heat gun on watercolor paper is you will lift the tape and if it's still wet, your watercolor seeps right under and you kind of don't give your watercolor enough time to do some of the magical things it wants to do when it's drying so just kind of resist I'm telling you just resist resist let's just put some water dabs on these little salt tips and just see if that'll help them make some cool texture too i really love this whole area right down here and then all right let's do that let's do that right there okay i'm gonna let this dry and then i'll be back all right we've let these dry for quite a bit and I'm going to just take a old uh, card and scrape the salt off. I love doing it this way rather than flicking it with my finger because, I don't know, salt rubs the skin off your finger. <laughs> and these big pieces are super easy to go ahead and just scrape right off really easy. And once your watercolor's dry, you can see like all the yummy texture that that gives you. I love that. So that's kind of what I was going for. And I saved the salt um, just because I, I hate throwing it away. So I just put that salt back in the container. If you want to keep your salt clean though, you might put the dirty salt in a different container and then you can use it um, on a project where it doesn't matter. But if you need no color bleed, cause that'll create some color bleed on new pieces, um, have a little container of dirty salt and a container of clean salt, just in case you're looking at that and you're gasping. <laughs> so at this point we can do anything on top that we want. We can draw on top with pastels, pencils, Neo Color 2 crayons. We can add some stencil work, which is what I think I'm going to do because I have some stencils in here and some old favorites that I thought might be fun to try. And I have some stencils I never used. So I thought, let's just get some of this stuff out and play with it because why'd you buy it if you're never going to use it? And so I've got two stencils by um, Tim Holtz, um, which I think are super cool. And these came out of the Stampers Anonymous layering collections. And this came as like a pack of three. So I randomly pulled this one stencil out of this pack and it doesn't really separate what those are. It just shows you pictures on it. So this came out of the pack with some letters in it. This other one came out of a pack with some numbers in it. So super fun. It's a layering set. Oh, this is set seven. I can see it on the package there. And this one is set eight. So I'm using set seven and set eight. I stencil out of each of those sets. Um, and then I happen to think, you know, Punchinella is my very favorite stencil, so I still reserve the right to use that. But what if you're having trouble finding Punchinella? Um, there is this, uh, several stencils out there that look like Punchinella made by stencil companies. So I've got one myself from the Crafters Workshop, and it's got uh, Beehive and Punchinella and some stars. So that's a really fun way to do that. And this uh, stencil is called Mini Punchinella. So just in case you're having trouble finding Punchinella. You can get a stencil. And I kind of like this one, the Crafters Workshop number 502. Um, so I don't know, I've just got them out, but I'm, I'm really loving this one with the dots. I'm kind of thinking, I love this one with the great big round circles. So, I really love the pink and the teal on this. I've got some Arteza paints with whole lot, with a lot of colors over here. I've got some orange, pink. I like these because you can get a whole set of like 60 colors for basically 30 bucks. I mean, they're, they're, they're hardly nothing on Amazon. Ooh, look at this kind of Bordeaux red. That might be fun. 
I really like that pretty blue, but it's so hard to find that blue in a mixed up color. I could definitely mix colors, but some of the fun to do it. Ooh, look at this ochre. Do we want to do ochre? Whoa, maybe, maybe. Or do we want to do orange? I'm kind of feeling maybe the Bordeaux red. Pink's kind of bright. Maybe we'll do the red. But on things like this, I kind of just want to experiment and go with the flow. Oh, look at this color. This is like a pretty salmon. This is vermilion. Let's go with the Bordeaux. This is playtime. It's not make some masterpiece time. And it is okay if you don't love what you got because I got little secrets uh, with stuff like this. I like to cut up art. I got no problem whatsoever. If I didn't like it, cut it right up. And I'm using a dry stencil. This is just an artist sponge and a thicker paint. You don't want to use real thin paint and just stencil away and see what you get. Ooh, look at that. That's super fun. Okay, I like that a lot. Almost thinking. Okay, so let's move over to this one kind of thinking do I like that same color on these others maybe I like it over here on this third one this is a little bit like a punchinella but tinier <gasps> Ooh, see now I love that don't know if I loved it in the color that I just used but I do love it like ooh, see we could have done pink on that that would have been good let's go back with some of this it's just called pink I'm feeling the pink We'll go back. I like that a lot. That's very much right up my alley. Let's just go over here with this color. These little holes are so little that I am kind of squishing the sponge a little bit to get that in there. Oh yeah, see now I like that. That's pretty. Maybe I like a little over here. Oh see, really feel like this middle one's going to be my favorite. Okay, I like that. Let's leave that one right there. Ho, ho, ho. Starting to feel it. Okay, so I also love gold. Also, let's see. What, did I want to do something else on this? I feel like this is calling for something else. I feel like this one is just calling for me to go crazy on it because I don't know if I'm going to like it anyway, so why not? Hmm. All right, let's pull some of our other stencils. So one of my favorite ones is this one, and this is a Stencil Girl stencil, and it's called S227. So when you look at these on Stencil Girl, and I'm giving you these numbers, you gotta have that S in front of that 227 for that to pop up. Just a little tip there that somebody else told me when they couldn't find it. So I was like, okay, I'll share that. <laughs> Got to have that S. I think this one's like corrugated lines or something like that. But this one's super cool. Oh, see, that one made me feel better about that. Let's go over here on this last one over here. Let's see. Let's do it right over here. Ooh, yeah, see, I like that. Still loving this middle one the best, though. This is why I do more than one at a time, because you can experiment. You let yourself go a little bit. You don't get so hung up in what am I getting, and I love it or hate it. I kind of love this, but maybe in a different color for this one. Like, I can almost see there's a gray. I almost feel like this green in here, which... That green, I know I'm all over the place here, but you gotta, is this lichen green, this mineral paint that I used before in another one. Uh, but I'm kind of feeling like maybe, may, and maybe, you know what, let's do it this way. <laughs> let's just mix it up. <laughs> but I like it when you do more than one, you're not as hung up on, am I gonna mess it up? Oh, see, now I'm feeling that, okay. You're not as hung up on, I don't want to mess it up. You got a couple. You can be a little braver in your color choices and your decisions. Oh, see, now that was like an, a fun a little surprise there. I like not being so hung up on stuff. All right, so I feel like it needs something else. What does it need? Do we need some marks? 
Do we need some ink? You know, I love gold ink. Would that make this one complete? That one might make that one complete. Like we could use a circle in there. And then keep in mind too, if you think, oh, not doing what you want, you can leave them and come back to them. I feel a circle in here. You can cut them up. Cutting art up is definitely one of my favorite things to do. So that also releases a whole lot of pressure on yourself if you know that no matter what, you can come back and cut it up. Let's see, I've got that paint stick over here. This paint on this first one might still be wet and I'm gonna use my great big paint st stick that I got at the paint store as a hand rest. I like things that sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my Kiritake Gold Mica Paste that I love so much. This is my Kakamori Brass Nib. You can use any dip pen, any nib that you want, but these are just my favorite, so definitely getting my money out of them. <laughs> I kind of feel like, what if, okay, I'm loving that. We could even come back and do some Asimic writing, which is some basically fake writing, like think it says something and you're looking at it and you're like what does that say I can't really tell and it doesn't actually say anything but in the mind of the viewer it might say something to them like they might be like oh this looks like whatever and they come up with a story of what that says for them look at that Whoa, definitely loving the little bit of like a fake writing and you know you could name your piece, you know, Sunrise in the Mist, in whatever place is your favorite. And then that writing could have been like, you know, a poem in the mist or something fun like that. Okay, that's getting real fun now. Love, love, love the little bits here. Ha 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 ha! That one's talking to me. This one, not so much. Let's just draw. Let's go add some other stuff to it. Just work with me here. Experiment, play. I want you to sit at your table and paint and play with me. <laughs> and pull out something that you don't normally work with. Pick a weird color palette that you're like, okay, way outside my comfort zone, like I did, but look how pretty that one is there. <laughs> and just create and say, okay, what can I make today? And then you're gonna discover so many amazing things with your art, your art practice, the fun things that you're creating, that you're like, okay, I am feeling all this and I'm having fun making art. Let's just draw out here. Let's kind of get me a circle here. Circles might not be your thing. Maybe you like to draw ladders. Maybe you like hash marks. Maybe, you know, whatever your thing is. That can be like your signature mark that you just sneak into a painting. There's this one painter that I saw in a gallery. I think I was in Charleston. And he paints the most amazing paintings that somewhere in his painting he hides a little painted picture of his dog and the fun goal of looking at his paintings is trying to find the dog and I love that maybe my thing is circles maybe your thing is including a little tiny painted picture of your dog <laughs> I love it when there's like a little stick that kind of goes around and belongs with what it is that you love to do and people recognize it and it kind of becomes like your thing I love that What's my thing? My thing is experimenting with as many art supplies as I can get my hands on and then showing them to you so you can lust after them with me. <laughs> That's my thing. <laughs> oh, see now I'm feeling this bit of scribble right along the side of this that made that feel so much better to me that I'm starting to love that now. Oh, look at that, look at that, see? 
totally different but all the same colorway okay i'm feeling that let's try that pin out and then let's see are we done enough oop i pulled the nib out of my pin so you know these dip pins you get a handle and you get a nib and these nibs just slip right in, in case you wondered <laughs> But I make sure to clean this nib off. I don't want to get anything stuck in it. All right, I'm really loving these. Feel like maybe, maybe, you know what? Before we do that, maybe we need some white Posca pen in here. All right, I'm feeling that. So some of it's just about sitting and looking at it and thinking, what else could I do here? Let me scoop my little paint out of the way before I stick my arm in it. And then let's peel the tape and see what we got. And then you could evaluate and think, does it need something else or am I done? And the thing with these little intuitive sessions that I want you to spend months on a piece of whatever i want you to paint something and be accomplished and be done in that half hour that you have to paint and then as you get more of these under your belt you're thinking all right i'm ready to go bigger i'm ready to really utilize some of these things that i've done then spend longer and be more exact but on these i want you to kind of let let, let go relax have some fun decide what you like what you don't like Figure out some new color palettes. Try things that you would never normally try. Okay, this one's tearing my paper. So if you have issue with paper tear, heat up your tape with your heat gun. So let's just heat this one up and see if we can release that. So I tell people, heat it up. It helps the tape release. And then hopefully you'll have less of an issue peeling. Oh yeah, see that comes off way easier. Totally works! <laughs> and then the end I didn't have trouble with, so maybe I can peel that okay. Go slow, pull it at an angle, heat the tape. That's your secrets. Oh, check it out! Okay, so these are super fun. I actually love both of these as little atmospheric landscapes and this one is my favorite of the whole day. Like this one I'm like okay that's complete. I'm gonna you know say that's done, sign it and, and do that. This one I love it. I don't know if it's complete. It doesn't speak to me in the same way that that one does. This one I'm kind of loving it. And at the same time, I don't know that it's my favorite, but I love all the gold. I love that it's doing that. I do see that I could frame this, maybe sign it. I also see that I could cut this up. And let me tell you, one of my favorite things to cut things up is I have this great big heart punch. I got a heart punch. <laughs> and sometimes when I have a bunch of really ugly art, I will cut them up into hearts and make a new piece of art, like heart art. <laughs> Like you could actually take a piece of paper. Let's get a piece of paper and show you this. It's one of my very favorite things. You could do circles and you know you could do heart art. You could do lines. You could do all kinds of fun stuff on a big piece of paper. A little bit larger. Kind of frame it out. But look how pretty all these are. And these were like really ugly. <laughs> but as little tiny hearts they turn out like amazing this one look how pretty that is you can see the gold in there and so I love these these are just random pieces of art that I did not love and so I can actually see quite easily some of these making amazing hearts like you can just kind of move around and see how super cool each little look at that one Ooh, right there look how gorgeous that is <laughs> cutting stuff up into hearts and circles <laughs> the circles are fun too I do like the circles I've got a I really love that right there like I actually want to maybe cut that white part off come back and make that the heart I love how the gold is swooping into the heart 
So I love to cut art up. Another thing I like to do is slice the art into slices and then reimagine it and put the slices back together in another order. So I call that junk art collage. And so I can definitely see the sliced up and reordered and coming up with something cool that way too. So all fun stuff to look, to think about. This one is my very favorite. This one is a finished yummy gorgeous piece that I'm happy with. So I hope you have fun playing. I hope you try out these peerless watercolors. They're super cool and I'll see you next time.